All right, it's about that time. Let's get started. Um, again, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Arun Thuraviyam, and I'm a simulation product manager here with Go Engineer. Thank you so much for joining us on this webinar where we'll be going over some new finite element analysis technology. With me, I have Dr. Omar Zoni from Dassault Systems. He's a senior technical manager for their simulation products. Uh, hey, Omar, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you great, Arun. Thanks, and uh, thanks for inviting me to present today. I'm excited to show uh, to show the people on the call some new functionality. Awesome. Thanks for making the time. Um, yep. Before we get started, just some housekeeping items. Well, all your mics have been muted because I think we have about 200 attendees. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, you can type them out in the chat box, and either Omar and I will get to it depending on who's presenting the webinar. Awesome. So let's get started. Um, th the agenda is really simple. We're going to go over this new finite element technology called SimuliaWorks. Uh, Omar and I will showcase some FEA case studies to introduce the interface and some of the capabilities. Then we'll wrap up the presentation with some technology highlights that, you know, that we feel would benefit your product development workflow, especially if you're running structural analyses. And finally, we'll do a little discussion about the 3D experience platform to see how that can help you collaborate better with your users. So let's get started. So what is SimuliaWorks? SimuliaWorks is basically just Simulia. It's the simulation software brand from Dassault Systems that can do you know, finite element analysis, CFD, and pretty much any kind of realistic uh, analysis and simulation under the sun. Um, now, why is it named differently? That's because it's essentially employed with the, on the 3D experience platform. Uh, this is done to enable SOLIDWORKS users to get access to this technology. The key behind this was basically to deliver you know, advanced simulation technology uh, with the familiar ease of use and advanced functionality that SOLIDWORKS users are accustomed to. So SimuliaWorks is essentially Simulia with SOLIDWORKS. Um, and as far as the technology we'll be discussing today, it'll be based around the Abacus FEA solver. So that's the finite element analysis solver technology that we're using to run the sophisticated static and st uh, dynamic structural analysis uh, on the platform. Now, uh, so where all this fits with the uh, SOLIDWORKS user base is essentially we are able to deliver a connected environment between uh, the SOLIDWORKS UI and the Simulia structural analysis program. Um, and this is done through the 3D experience platform. So any kind of design changes you make on the CAD side can essentially be pushed into the simulation side without making any changes. And we'll be demonstrating a little bit of that um, during the presentation. Next is the interface. Of course, you know, uh, what impedes a lot of users from getting into finite element analysis software is they feel that the interface might be difficult to use for the sophisticated analysis that they're running. And we'll be showcasing today how easy the interface is to get from start to finish for setting up advanced analysis problems. And finally, it's basically the capability, right? You want to be able to simulate large deformation uh, advanced contacts and also really realistic materials uh, with uh, you know in your structural analysis cases and we're able to deliver that with the platform as well so essentially this is a value proposition to the SOLIDWORKS base it's the ease of use with the sophisticated structural analysis tool that you can uh, use to supplement your existing you know simulation programs to run really highly advanced structural analysis now to that end, as I mentioned, Omar and I have some case studies, so I'll start off with mine. This is just a really simple ladder frame. Um, so when you take automobile technology or automobile frame technology, there are two kinds of frames. There's the monocoque frame and the ladder frames. The monocoque frames are slightly more modern frames that you find in commercial vehicles, but the ladder frames still exist, especially for uh, automobiles that are designed for carrying heavy loads. Uh, and it's called the ladder frame because it basically has two beams that resemble a ladder and has a couple of cross members running across to provide the frame the much needed torsional rigidity that it needs when you mount the engine and transmission components. So the goal here is to ensure that this has that torsional rigidity. So we started off with a base design and added an X member to see how that's improved the structural performance of the frame and also its torsional rigidity. So I'd like to go over this case study um, just within SOLIDWORKS and the Simulia Structural Analysis Program. Now, it starts with SOLIDWORKS where uh, we um, essentially start the program with the 3D Experience Connector. Now, we would open up a SOLIDWORKS file just as you usually would, you know, go to the open dialog box. Now here, we've saved all the files in the 3D Experience Drive, which is a way by which you can share files amongst multiple devices without any uh, corrupt, uh, data corruption. Now, opening up this little frame that we designed, 
um, you will be able to see that the feature tree has essentially two folders, one folder for just the base design and another for the X member. Now, the first thing we do in the connector is to save the model and the save process is two steps. Essentially, you copy, create a local copy of the file on your desktop so that you're able to work on it. And next, you, create, you convert the file so that it's actually saved on the cloud in order to run the analysis on the platform. So this way, it, you maintain connectivity between the SOLIDWORKS CAD and the simulation model. Another thing, once you push this information onto the 3D experience platform, it is essentially available for all users. So it is a good idea to uh, reserve the file so that only you have access to it. Next, you're able to also launch the simulation application right from within the connector. And the simulation applications are essentially called mechanical scenario or structural scenario based on whether you would like to run some explicit analyses or implicit analyses. Uh, both of these applications possess the static analysis tool that we need to run the analysis on the frame. Now, as soon as this application is launched, you can switch over to it from SOLIDWORKS and your analysis model is uh, essentially ready to go. So like I mentioned, we'll be using the Simulia Structural Mechan Simulia Mechanical Scenario Creation app to run the analysis. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is that the interface might seem similar uh, you know, it, it might seem a little similar to what you're accustomed to in SOLIDWORKS. You have the little feature tree or the spec tree that has the f history of all the analysis features that you're going to set up. In addition to that, you have something called the assistant panel that essentially indicates all the items you need in order to set up a complete analysis model. So in case you're missing any inputs, the assistant panel immediately indicates what you're missing and you're able to correct that in order to be in order to be able to run the analysis successfully in addition to that you have this action bar that gives you all the tools in order to set up the specific analysis so you start off by selecting the setup button in order to indicate to the software what kind of analysis you'd like to run um, now in the action bar you have access to all of the analysis analysis types that you know we just discussed all the way from static implicit static analysis to explicit dynamic analysis now since this is a simple torsion test i'll set up a static analysis name it torsion test then once that's complete all i need to do is indicate to the software which mesh model i'll be using and then i can proceed with the meshing process next going to the parts item i'll essentially need to tell the software what kind of material properties i'll be applying to the model and what kind of element type i'll be using to run the analysis now, although this might look like a, solo, a solid frame, this is actually hollowed out, so I'll be using the shell uh, element in order to run the analysis. So I can grab that from the action bar, select the model, and just indicate the wall thickness of this little uh, ladder frame. So the wall thickness here is 0.25, 0 a quarter inch. So typing that in, the software automatically makes the conversion to millimeters. And finally, material properties. Well, you do have access to a material database that you can import into the platform. But typically, when you're running these kind of advanced analyses, it is recommended that you find a data a specification sheet that goes over the plastic and the elastic data and the plastic data that then you can program into the software. Um, so what I've done is I've created a 1020 material property that has both the elastic and the plastic data. And I'm able to choose between whether I need to include the plasticity or if I should just run the elastic model. Well, the advantage here is that if you do experience large deformations in these small, smaller static tests, the software is still able to take that into account and, uh, you know, uh, and ensure that it's applied the right stresses in the high strain areas. And the last step towards, or the next step towards creating the model is the measure. The measure in the software is also pretty impressive and it's automated. You have all the meshing tools available here in the action bar as soon as you select the mesh item in the assistant panel. And what we'll be taking advantage of is the quad measure. Um, so once I select the quad measure and I select the model, the software is able to automatically predict what the average element size needs to be. Um, so I started off with this. This was a little coarse. So I, for the actual model, I set it to 15 millimeters instead of the 80 recommended by the software. But it still gives you a number that is a really good starting point. Um, I'd like to point out a couple of things here. It is that uh, first thing is the element order. Just within this panel, you're able, you have access to both first order and second order quads. But for this simple torsion twist, um, you only need to run a linear material model because you're using quad, uh, I'm sorry, a linear element type because you're using quad elements. 
Um, and next, because you have a lot of curvatures on these model, um, you're able to use the quad dominant configuration that prioritizes quad elements, but in areas with tight curvatures, the software is able to apply triangular elements. Now, if that is an issue, if you want the software to stick to only quads, you're able to do that just within this menu. Once that's done and I mesh the model, I'd like to show you just one more uh, menu which I find really useful, uh, which is um, if I hit the edit button, we go into the surface mesh editing workbench where then you can assign refinements to critical areas in the model. So the nice thing about this is that I have a little quality analysis tool that I can use to essentially check that my element quality is, uh, you know, conforms to the quality criteria that I've specified in the software. So these quality criteria are automatically specified, but if you have really complex models that need to conform to a certain quality criteria, you're able to either manually input them or upload them as a document. Now here, uh, you can see all the green um, elements indicate that you have good quality elements and all the yellow elements are, you know, kind of poor quality elements. Now, this isn't a very critical area, so we can kind of ignore it. And I think the takeaway here is that a majority of your of these elements essentially conform to the quality criteria that have been prescribed. And it's, it's, it's really easy to um, essentially get that feedback from the software. Now, once that's done, it's time to apply the boundary conditions. And, you know, sometimes you're forced to apply the boundary conditions on the nodes and elements that can be a little, little bit of a hassle. Um, so here, I'm gonna hide the mesh so that, that way I can apply the boundary conditions directly to the, um, to the uh, solid model. Now, since I'm going to apply a, tor a torsional load, I'm going to clamp the rear faces of this component. And then next, I'm going to apply the torque load to this beam. So here's another technique that is popularly employed in finite element analysis uh, setup, which is using uh, remote connectors or coupling elements. So essentially, uh, since the torque load is transferred to this beam through suspension elements that I haven't modeled here, I can mimic a point in space that resembles the uh, the torquing point of these suspension elements. And how I can do that is using the coupling element right here and selecting the faces that the coupling element essentially transfers the load to. Now, selecting both these faces automatically creates a point that's at the uh, that's at the that's at the center of mass of both of these elements. So that way, you know, you kind of uh, you know, you're, you're kind of able to apply the torque at the right spot. Essentially, this point in space is connected to both of these faces through rigid beams um, that then transfers the load that's applied to that point. Uh, again, the, uh, and the reason I'm emphasizing this is that during Omar's presentation, when he's giving, when he's giving us these uh, the advanced applications for this program, uh, you'll notice that he uses these quite a lot when running some of those analyses. Now, once this coupling element is defined, uh, all I need to do is apply the torque right at the center in order to torsion test this component. Again, I can get that by grabbing the torque item from the uh, action bar and just selecting, well, the coupling element. And again, uh, you're not restricted to the point that's, that's, uh, that's assumed by the software. You're also able to put a point out in space that resembles, uh, you know, the, the loading point more accurately. Now, as far as the torque application goes, really all I'm after is the torsional rigidity. So the the value for the torque doesn't matter. The magnitude doesn't matter. I'm just gonna divide that by the degree of rotation anyway. So I'm gonna just apply a 2000 Newton meter torque in the X direction. Now, once that's complete, uh, I know that the uh, finite element analysis model is complete because uh, you know all the items on my uh, assistant panel are checked. So all I need to do is essentially run the simulation. Now, as soon as I hit the simulate button, I have a couple of options here. I'm able to use local uh, my the local cores on my machine to run the analysis, or if I have really advanced analyses that you know have a number of contacts and really complex material models, I'm also able to take advantage of cloud computing in order to you know expand the computing capabilities I'm able to apply to this, this specific problem. So you have two choices there, and it's just it's literally just a menu click away. Now, this is a relatively simple model, so I'm just going to use my local computing resources to run the analysis. And as the analysis is running, I'd just like to talk through this box. Um, 
Now, uh, this this box essentially gives you a lot of uh, a lot of pretty useful uh, data, in the sense the message tab it gives you access to errors and warning either during the that the analysis program finds out during the analysis or while assembling the finite element analysis model. So, for instance, if you have any warped elements or elements that don't conform to your quality criteria, it shows up as a warning. Or if you have any large deformations, that uh, that shows up as a warning as well. And, you know, the analysis is completed, and there you go. The, here are the stress results. So you have a default set of results that the analysis program, you know, automatically throws on the screen. And you know the first first test, the first result you see is the von Mises stress, uh, and it's around 266 megapascals. While the uh, yield strength of the frame is somewhere around 300 to 320, so we're really close to yielding right here, which isn't which isn't too great for the frame. And besides, we're we have applied only the torque load. We haven't applied any of the uh, weight of the engine or the transmission components that would further weaken the frame. So really, you want to aim for a factor of safety that's much uh, higher than you know what's what's being shown by the software. So that's one inference. The next thing is the reason we did this is to try to figure out the torsional rigidity. So we need to plot the uh, the rotation of the frame due to the torque load. Now this can be done very simply by going into the contour plot and using a displacement or a displacement template in order to create the uh, the the rotational output. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create the displacement output. I apologize, let me do that again. And since I'm after the rotation, right, I'll need to select the, uh, I need to grab the rotation, and that should give me the equivalent rotation. And then I can use the spec tree that's created this plot in order to update the plot for deformation and the component that I'd really like to, well, output. So the component I'd like to output is the is rotation component one, which is the x direction. And just to exaggerate the plot, you know, for effect, to make sure that this is deforming the right direction, I'm gonna scale up the deformation 20 times. And there it is. Um, you can see that you have a 0.7 degree rotation due to this torque load. All right, that's great. That constitutes about uh, 3,000 Newton meters per degree, but what I'm aiming for is 5,000. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the model. Now the model update is relatively straightforward. I'll go back into the setup and I'll jump back into SolidWorks for this. So um, once within SolidWorks, I'm going to uncheck the X member. Uh, although I've hollowed out this component right here, I'd actually like a slightly more stiff design, so I'm going to uh, suppress that shell feature so it's not quite as hollow. And now that I've made this modification, all I need to do is push this modification onto the cloud so pushing the modification is relatively straightforward. Um, all I need to do is use the 3D Experience Connector and hit Save. And when I save, I have the Save dialog box that actually requests uh, if I need to revision this model. So I can directly push the update and not maintain a history of all the design changes I go through. But I prefer hitting this new revision so that I have, a, you know, so that I can maintain a history and see what kind of design changes I've implemented to the model to essentially get to the spot where I'm at. So once I do this and I and I hit the save button. It just takes a couple of seconds to index onto the platform. And now that the indexing is complete, I'm able to jump back into the platform and update the model. To do so, all I need to do is select the setup button and go to the spec tree, right click the model and say replace model by revision. This gives me a list of all the revisions I've gone through while coming up with the final model. Now, once I select the B revision, I'm able to say OK. And you'll notice that the software immediately updates the existing design with the new X member. You'll also notice that in the assistant panel, the software has managed to keep all the restraints and the loading conditions that was previously applied. This is a big advantage of using this workflow. Finally, all you need to do to run the analysis is to update the mesh so that the finite element model includes the X member. Yep, once the update is complete, you can head into simulate and run the analysis. Again, I'm going to use my local cores to uh, run, this, run the analysis. 
Now let's talk about the message block once more. I, I mentioned the messages that indicates any warning as the software is building the finite element model. Um, now, if you are running a nonlinear analysis, the plots and the iterations help you keep track of the time step taken for each plot and the time taken for convergence as well. And you can basically use the diagnostic files to um, study, you know, the time taken for the analysis to complete as well as if there were any errors encountered during the analysis process. Right, let me dismiss this simulation status box here. You can see that the analysis is complete. Now, taking a look at the results, uh, you'll see that the displacement has reduced to about 0.53 degrees from, uh, from 0.76 degrees. Uh, which constitutes a increase in torsional rigidity to about fifth, uh, to about 5,000 newton meters per degree. And in addition to that, looking at the stress values, you'll see that the stresses have also significantly lowered. Initially, we had a stress of about 266, which is pushing it really close to the yield strength. But now we just have a stress of 184 that gives us a sufficient factor of safety to establish that hey, if there was any additional weight put on this frame, it will not plastically deform. Now let's get back into the presentation and quickly summarize this. Now running this analysis, I, may, I was able to reduce the rotation from 0.74 to 0.53. That actually increased the rotational stiffness from uh, from 3,000 newton meter newton millimeters per degree to 5,000. And in addition to that, I was able to alleviate the stress. Now while this program you know, wasn't re wasn't really designed to tackle. It's it's designed to tackle simple problems like this. But the really the real sweet spot for this program is to run some advanced static and dynamic analyses. And I'm going to hand this over to Omar to showcase some of those capabilities. So I am going to just give you guys a couple slides with a little more background. Um, uh, there were a lot of questions or a handful of questions that came into a room. So just make sure you you uh, keep up with that. Um, so Dassault Systems is a very large company with a whole lot of brands. Um, you know, you guys know the SolidWorks brand. Um, the the Simulia Works tools are a collaboration between Simulia and SolidWorks. So I wanted to give you guys a little background about Simulia. Um, Simulia is basically um, all. Simulia is basically the brand that is responsible for all of the simulation capabilities and tools uh, inside of Dassault Systems. So. This chart gives you about the last 20 years, the, the acquisitions that um, Dassault has made that fall under the Simulia brand. Now, um, you know, the kind of the flagship product is their Abacus tool, the Abacus solver. I'm sure you guys have heard of that. And that is where we've initially started to work um, on this collaboration between the two brands. So the Simulia Works brand is using the Abacus solver. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of Abacus Explicit also. Um, but I think it's important for you guys to understand the, the long-term commitment and the, the, the breadth and depth of the tools that are available inside the Dassault umbrella. So, you know, if you break simulation up into kind of the main eight uh, physics, I would argue these, these are probably them. You can see that Dassault has, and Simulia has a solution for all of those physics. Um, now, you know, as I, I, Arun and myself mentioned, the, the initial Simulia Works offering is really around structures and the Abacus Solver, but it's very easy to see or envision some more um, of these solvers becoming available to the SolidWorks community, right? So uh, it's a really exciting time to be working at the SO and uh, especially in the simulation space. So, um, I don't love this slide because I, you know, if you're using SolidWorks simulation with a desktop tool, I would argue that SolidWorks simulation premium can do some pretty advanced analyses. I don't think it just does simple physics. That being said, if you were using SolidWorks sim premium, you probably, or you, you may have hit some limits about around what it could solve, right? So problems with really, really large strain, um, complicated material models, situations where, um, you know, the contact is ill-defined or you've got a lot of contact pairs, um, or just really, really large models that might take a, lot, a long time to solve. Um, those are all things that Simulia and Abacus are really good at. So again, the Simulia Works brand is not a full-blown seat of Simulia. There were a couple of questions about um, Simulia capabilities. It, it really focuses around the needs um, of the SolidWorks user community. 
Now it's on the 3D Experience platform. Um, Arun will show you some of the more collaborative aspects of the platform a bit later. But one of the things to, to be aware of is it's you know that's it's a cloud piece of software. Um, so there are instances where you could actually run problems on the cloud to utilize a virtual machine and really increase your run times. That being said, right now, I would argue these are kind of the, the main um, types of problems that if you're running uh, in, if you're running these kind of problems in, in, in your simulation day to day, that might require or might at least for it'd be a good idea to at least uh, look at Simulioworks, right? So um, let me pop out and show you guys a couple examples. So here we've got a, a gear assembly. Um, looks relatively simple, right? So just two, two gears. I'm going to rotate one of them 360 degrees, try to get a feel for exactly how much torque is required uh, to achieve that. Now I'm using the same kind of coupling uh, uh, technique that Arun used for both of these. So there's a, a coupling with a node in the center. That's where I'm going to apply my rotations and kind of monitor results. So what's tricky about this? Well, if we zoom in here, we can see that initially we have got some penetration between the gear teeth. So if you were running this in SOLIDWORKS simulation, you'd have to uh, define your contact pairs for interference, do your interference fit. You would probably also need to define the contact pairs for all of these teeth as they're rotating, right? So this group of teeth is gonna uh, come into contact with these and so on and so forth. One of the really compelling benefits of using the SimuliaWorks solver is that you don't need to do that. So, um, they have a, a really robust and powerful general contact technique that basically, um, you know, for the interfering teeth, I can just say, look, I want you to find any, any teeth that are interfering. Uh, it automatically does that. In my general contact, which I set right here, I can say, look, treat those as a, uh, an interference fit. So I'm running this in two steps. The first step resolves the interference fit using this contact initialization and, and treating it as an interference. And then the second step actually rotates the bottom gear. But this is all done really with the push of a button. I mean, there, there's no setting up manual contact pairs. The general contact condition makes the assumption that any faces that come into contact during the run are a no penetration contact and you can specify your friction coefficient. So if we take a look at this, let's um, look at some results here. My first step, which is my interference fit. Let me just zoom in so you guys can see what's going on. You can see initially we've got some interference here. We've got some interference uh, there. And then when it runs through, you can see all those interferences are resolved. Now, what I'll point out is that there's a little bit of plastic strain that gets um, induced as a result of uh, resolving that interference. And then in the next step, we go ahead and we rotate this thing 360, or uh, yeah, 360 degrees. And we can see that all of the teeth are actually generating a, a, a bit of plastic stress. So this is one of those problems that, you know, it looks relatively simple, but to solve this actually takes quite a bit of uh, computing power. It's a, it's a, a really nonlinear problem. Um, and, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that we wanted to figure out torque requirements, so I've actually created a, a nice little XY plot that shows the uh, torque uh, over the, the full range of rotation. So we can take a look at that here. So it'd be about uh, 60 Newton meters of, uh, if we were sizing a motor, it'd be about 60 Newton meters. And very easy to come in here and like switch and look at things like contact stress or contact pressure. And I'll go ahead and look at you know one of the, the steps in the rotation here. So we can see those contact pressures um, along the, the the contacting teeth. And this is not a great mesh. I didn't really refine the mesh. Um, you know, I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of functionality. Let's take a look at another example. So this is meant to mimic a honeycomb structure. Now the, the structure itself is made of a really compliant um, a really compliant silicon, a hyperelastic material. Um, and we actually uh, got the material constants because we had some test data. So there's a really nice material calibration app that you guys can utilize too with in Simulia Works that if you've got test data, it will fit to one of the material models. But in this, I think in this case, we're using the Yao um, hyperelastic material model. So let me just turn off the mesh here. So you, a couple things. Um, 
Again, I'm going to use a coupling technique in the center. Uh, the outside of this uh, honeycomb structure is fixed. The center has a structure that can push it down, up, left, right, and also rotate it. So um, again, using the general contact inside of Simulia Works, I don't have to speci manually specify any contact pairs. The solver knows that any faces that can uh, come into contact during the run um, are you know, a no penetration contact. So let's take a look at the results. And this thing ran in about three or four hours. I'm using a, a pretty fine uh, hex mesh. That's another nice thing about this. You know, If you were using SolidWorks simulation on the desktop side, you were restricted to only using TETS. Um, here you can use uh, a brick mesh. You can use a, a swept brick mesh. There are some really great element formulations for hyperelastic materials. So they have H elements that are specifically written to handle hyperelastic situations and hyperelastic materials. And if we go ahead and animate this, you guys can see that the amount of uh, distortion that's happening around those circular faces, those internal circular faces, right? So again, a model that looks relatively simple, but I don't think you could have solved this inside a SOLIDWORKS simulation. I think, you know, the, the level of buckling here, um, you know, the localized buckling would have really uh, thrown the solver for a, a loop. All right, so those uh, two um, are, um, th those two are some nice examples. I want to now, but those are things that you could have potentially tried to solve in SOLIDWORKS, the desktop tools, the desktop simulation tools. I want to now show you guys some really advanced capabilities that, you know, this is stuff that we did not have, um, you know, on the desktop side. So we've got the ability now to do damage modeling. So this is just, you know, a, a simple bar kind of stretch test, but you can specify a, a damage material model that actually will um, start eliminating elements as they exceed a certain stress. So I'm sure if anybody's doing like crack initiation or crack initiation and crack propagation, you can probably see where this could provide some value, right? Um, and I'll show you this next guy, this Sharpie test is um, an another one that I'm sure you guys have seen in the past. So a little notched uh, Sharpie impact test. As we push that down, the, again, we're using a damage model that knows as the stresses get exceeded, this crack is kind of propagating and those elements are being removed. Now, the thing with these kind of analyses is you really have to have um, a, a very, very fine mesh if you want to accurately capture that crack propagation. But um, another really, really powerful functionality that you know this is stuff that we could not have done, um, you know, in, in SolidWorks simulation desktop. And then one of the another really powerful functionality is you know abacus is known on the implicit side for traditional finite element analysis it also has a world-class explicit solver um, so this is a customer of ours um, they're called irby they make these motorized scooters and what i've done is i've used abacus explicit to actually run a crash test so this model's relatively complicated um, you know it's got a lot of bolted connections uh, you know, I'm also including the load of a human sitting on it. So, and then I'm running it into the wall at, a, at its top speed of about 15 um, miles per hour. But if I, let, let me just show you guys what the mesh looks like, because I think if you guys are in this space that uh, the mesh will be something that um, you guys can appreciate. It's a really nice, well-structured brick mesh. Um, comp so the parts that are brick meshable, you can see we've got nice bricks. Obviously, this program can handle bolted connections, so we've added the bolts. It's a mix of bricks and tets. There are also some shell elements in here. There are um, couplings. There are some pins. It's a pretty complicated model, and I utilized the cloud to, to solve this. So um, I believe I ran it on about 32 cores. The, the, the power of cloud computing is here. It's available inside of Simulia Works. You know, your, if your run was taking uh, 30 hours uh, to run on your uh, it's very linear, right? So if you were running it on one core and it took 30 hours, if you're running it on 32 cores, it's going to take about one hour. Um, so you can, uh, really great productivity gains. And then again, Arun uh, mentioned the, the, the PLM strategy. So if you want to use that PLM strategy that has some revision controls, great way to, to, to manage your data. Um, 
yeah, it's just, it's a really, really powerful product. Um, and it just opens the door to the type, these types of simulations that were either really, really difficult, really, really time consuming, or just we couldn't do um, using the desktop product. So Arun, I'll kick it back to you now and um, you have another few slides and then um, we'll wrap up. Okay, awesome. And Omar, that was perfect that you ended with the explicit analysis because we used some of those techniques to actually test the frame for impact. And it really was just an additional, an extra step, uh, just two or three extra steps to what we had set up for the torsion test. You know, all I did was model in the bumper and specify a velocity of the frame and you know, run the explicit dynamic analysis. And I was able to immediately monitor the plastic deformation that the bumper undergoes and also see a track for any kind of plastic deformation that the other frame components undergo during the impact process. Again, doing this, uh, you know, doing this at such a short amount of time with a really simple setup is, 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 is actually unheard of in the simulation space. Um, so just to give you some uh, to wrap this up, you know, there are some highlights to this Simulia Works technology that can really benefit your product development workflow if you're looking for advanced structural analyses. And one of well, one of the main ones is the general contact that Omar showcased with the honeycomb structure. The ability to simulate self-contact without actually having to define explicit contact pairs. Now that's uh, you know that's uh, that's a uh, a lot of time saved during the analysis setup, and also the contact algorithms within Simulia are very stable to be able to handle multiple contact points. Now, besides the general contact algorithm, the advanced material database also, uh, the material models available in Simulia is also one of the highlights. Now, typical software have, you know, uh, hyperelastic, about two or three hyperelastic materials, but we have about nine hyperelastic material models through, the, through this technology, and besides, we have something called the material calibration app that can calibrate experimental data to figure out constants that fit any one of these material models. Next, I'm glad Omar showed the Urbi model. Uh, now, the highlight there was just being able to take advantage of the different measures in within Simulia Works to essentially uh, capture the complicated geometry using bolt connections and also using the hex or the brick measure to be able to capture some of the frame components. That's one of the highlights. And sequential loading is what we'd like to call this. In this case, uh, we, you know, Omar was able to solve the interference first and take that data and essentially run the rotation test as a second step to the analysis. So another, another example of this would probably be bolted assemblies where you can put in preloads on the bolts or thermal loads and have that carry over to any kind of pressurized loading in the second step. Uh, next, the, uh, the big highlight or one, and one of my favorite capabilities is the explicit analysis where we were able to run high impact and crash tests. Uh, here's just another frame that we impact tested to test structural rigidity and here's a pelican case that's being dropped from a certain height um, to test if you know any of the components fly off, and finally, cloud solution. You know, having the capacity to uh, be able to expand your computing capabilities just with the click of a button is is uh, is a fantastic feature in this uh, Simulia Works portfolio. You know, not being restricted to just your local computing resources opens up an entire uh, realm of sophisticated analysis you can run. You know, within reasonable uh, within within short short amounts of time. Now, besides the uh, technology offered, the advanced structural analysis technology offered by the platform, there is a collaboration element that makes it a little more enticing to a lot of customers, to a lot of our customers who like to, you know, interact with their, with their, with their colleagues on simulation or, you know, uh, CAD projects. So that's where the 3D experience platform essentially shines. It's being able to provide an environment of apps that Customer that users can use to essentially share data and ideas and design something. So I'm essentially going to jump into uh, my 3D experience platform and kind of give you guys an idea of what that collaboration looks like. So here it is. Here's my dashboard. You can think of the dashboard as a virtual meeting room. Um, the dashboard has a bunch of tabs that you can essentially put apps onto in order to interact with your data. For instance, uh, when I click the compass, I have access to all the apps uh, that I have installed on my uh, that you know that I have permission to access. And the 3D Play app is one of the more popular apps that's used to pre preview simulation results. 
So once I put in the 3D Play app, I can use the search functionality in order to look for all the simulations that I've run in order to search, in order to essentially, you know, deploy it onto the 3D Play app. So if I'd like to share the results from the frame analysis that I just ran in this session, I'm able to search for it right here. And the, and the search essentially brings up, uh, use this keyword and brings up all the items on on the cloud on my in my storage space that has the 1940 name but i'm able to take advantage of these 6w tags in order to filter them out uh, to the item that i'd like to share so for instance i'd like to share the simulation model so just selecting the physics simulation button gives me all the simulation files associated with this keyword so i'm able to drag and drag and drop this into the 3d play application that then immediately gives me a preview of the model so the benefit here being I don't actually have to open up the simulation application to view the results. I can just view it from any browser-enabled device. Another benefit of this 3D Play application is that now that it's on a shared dashboard, anyone who has access to the simulation team per dashboard essentially can view this frame. Uh, now they can either mark it up and make comments or actually download the frame and modify it since we all share a common space. And speaking of which, um, here it is, a colleague of mine, Shivani, looks like she came across this frame modification and she's got a comment on it. Now I can access these comments through the 3D Swim application that I have deployed on a different dash, um, on a different tab in this dashboard. Uh, and uh, the conversations tab in the 3D Swim application is like an instant messaging, uh, instant, instant messaging software where we can exchange uh, messages and ideas on designs that we're collaborating on. Uh, and it looks like she wants to know what the new rotational stiffness of the frame is. Let's say it's 5,000 Newton meters per degree. Now, once I give her that feedback, she can then evaluate it against specs that we've mutually agreed upon and see if that, uh, and see if it's valid or if there are any design changes that she believes we need to implement Besides posting messages on the 3D Swim application, you can also post pictures of annotated designs from the 3D Play application. And uh, for instance, here, what she's wanted me to do is to shift the frame forward by a certain distance and also completely change the design. That might be a tedious task and might, I might have a couple of projects coming up. So let me see if I can request it, if she can do it uh, instead. Now, that's a very simple request because she's got access to this specific frame model and really there's no infrastructure required to share designs like this it's all on the platform it's all in the cloud and she can very easily just download the frame and uh, make a new revision of it that we can then review mutually as a team so that's a little bit of the collaboration aspect of the platform that we really like uh, when it comes to sharing data and exchanging ideas just in one integrated environment now, to wrap all this up, uh, I'm going to go back in um, and uh, just just highlight some, some of the key points from this presentation, which is, yeah, you have access to advanced structural simulation technology on, on the 3D experience platform. What makes it really beneficial for SOLIDWORKS users is that we have this connected workflow that's able to maintain a relationship between the CAD models you've designed in SOLIDWORKS and the sophisticated analysis you run with Simulia. And finally, this browser-based collaboration makes sharing files and uh, ideas, you know, a really simple process without having to have any complicated IT infrastructure. Everything is managed on the cloud and, uh, you know, and the indexing of the different data that you interact with is almost immediate that every everybody has access to or whoever you, in, you, you need to have access to the stuff that you're working on have access to it immediately. Um, so what's next? Um, so basically, if you guys have any complex structural analysis applications that you find your current analysis software, you know, is hitting a limit on, you know, please contact us. We'd like to uh, test some of those applications against, uh, you know, this this new program we have. Um, and you can contact us using uh, using either the, the email ID or just give us a call. And Omar, you have some resources from your your end as well, right? That we can essentially yeah, I do. take advantage um, of. Yeah, let me share my screen real quick. 
Perfect. So there were a couple questions about, um, you know, how much these packages cost and kind of the different flavors. So I, I want to give, so basically these are the products that are available from Simulia Works. So there is, I would argue these are the three, um, you know, actual simulation tools. Simulation Collaborator just lets you review and compare results after a run. There's Structural Designer, which um, provides more of a low-end capability. It's using the Abacus Solver. Uh, probably not a great fit for the people on this call because you probably already have a lot of this functionality inside of your SolidWorks simulation uh, capabilities. And, you know, I, I would argue this tool is probably best for we're coming out with some really exciting cloud uh, kind of CAD capabilities. So if you're already using cloud, cloud CAD on the 3D experience platform, structural designer might be a great fit. The stuff we showed today was structural performance engineer and structural mechanics engineer. So if you're interested in, um, you know, uh, if you're interested in the products, these are the kind of the two that you would probably be interested in. This turns on kind of the explicit dynamics as well as some of the advanced material calibration. A majority of what we showed today was really in structural performance engineers, so, though. So aside from the, um, ex the crash testing stuff, the rest of the stuff was in structural performance engineer. And that provides, again, all of these are using the Abacus Solver. Structural performance engineer uh, is basically uh, uh, static, although it does actually have the implicit dynamic solver in the um, quasi-static. So basically, uh, Structural mechanics engineer is really if you're doing explicit analysis. That's the kind of the best. Uh, that's where it fits best. Uh, some additional resources. If you guys are interested in getting some more data, you can go to solidworks.com slash simuliaworks. Um, there's a whole host of data there. And then also you can um, check if you have if you're on my solidworks, you can check or uh, search for simulia and there, there are some videos and some uh, training that's available there. And I mean, this last slide is just kind of a, a little bit of a teaser, right? So this is all showing uh, analyses that are done using the explicit solver and impact test, can crush, uh, drop tests, and I'm not 100% sure what this guy is, but um, the explicit solver in Abacus, again, it's a, a world-class solver, um, really, really powerful and can do a lot of very, very um, interesting and complex models. So I think that's all I have, Arun, so I'm going to stop sharing and if there are some questions we can start to answer the questions yep i think that's that's all of it uh, thank you so much for attending guys